Hi, this is Ryan with Dan Foss Power Solutions. In this video, we are going to look at how to connect to the mobile service tool with a Wi-Fi capable device. The current hardware we have is the DM1000 display and the CS10 Telemax device. Both are Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capable products and allow us to use a mobile device to communicate with them. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at the CS10. The main use case for the CS10 is to replace the CG150 with a wireless connection to the desktop service tool. Another use case is to create a connection for the mobile service tool app on a cell phone or tablet. The Plus One mobile service tool is a software product Danfoss has that extends functionality of the Plus One desktop service tool to a mobile device. The free app is available on both the Android and iOS operating systems in their app stores. The app uses the Danfoss Interlink wireless connection for secure data transfer over Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Here is a video of my CS10 connected to the bus of my DM1000 running a demo application and my iPad with the mobile service tool app connected to the CS10 over Wi-Fi showing the application screen I created showing the signals from the DM1000. The Plus One Cloud website is used by developers and administrators to design, manage, publish and release customized system packages to the mobile service tool app for service technicians to visualize and connect to engines, controllers, and hydraulic systems, helping to quickly assess machine health status and do machine updates. We covered the mobile service tool in an earlier video. Video number 37, Intro to the Mobile Service Tool, can be found on our YouTube channel, Plus One Software. This video will get you started with the mobile service tool. Sign up and log in, create a package, upload your system, and create application screens. Let's take a look at the Plus One system many of you are familiar with today. Developers create and compile their system applications and guide. The desktop service tool is used to connect to the CAN bus and load applications, the LHX and MLHX files into the machine systems. The desktop service tool is also used by technicians in the field to set parameters, troubleshoot, and update machines. When we add a wireless cable device to the machine system, we now have the ability for future connections to be through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth using the desktop service tool or the mobile service tool. I'll go over what the high-level view to develop, administer, and release a mobile service tool package looks like and do a demo of the app on a mobile device. The desktop service tool is used to create the files that get uploaded to the Plus One Cloud website where the developer creates the server screens, creating gauges, and read and write parameters based on the signals designed in the guide application. Very similar to building a server screen in the desktop service tool. The firmware can also be loaded into the Plus One Cloud website to update machines. The administrator manages the releases and decides which technicians get those releases. This allows the administrator to have version control, unpublishing old releases and sending new releases to technicians that need them. The technician uses his mobile device to connect to a Plus One wireless device and the mobile service tool automatically determines if the system package to the developer made in the app matches the machine system and allows the technician to read and write parameters and update the controller based on what the developer has created in the app screen and system package. The desktop service tool can also be used to connect via the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth as an alternative to a CG150. The mobile service tool app is available and free to download and create an account, much like we allow the technicians today to do with the desktop service tool. Plus One Cloud website is available to anyone who has a professional license to develop and administer. When we talk about the developer, the administrator, and the technician, those tasks could be performed by one person or divided up across multiple people. There really is no limit to how many people you can share a system package with. We have shared to over 150 people around the world while doing demos. Like the desktop service tool, the mobile service tool can be used to read and write parameters and to update a machine by downloading new applications to the controller. A mobile service tool package can be made from any current guide application. No changes in guide are required. To help make adding a CS10 to a system easy, Danfoss has developed an application that is loaded on the CS10 in production. This application can be used with a service tool P1D file to set up the CS10's CAN filtering, machine to machine setup, Wi Fi, and Bluetooth. At the time of this video, full Bluetooth support was not completed. Bluetooth should be available very early in 2021. The HWD LHX file for the application and the P1D can be found on the Update Center. Of course, you can always use the HWD template to make your own application if you want. The CS10 and DM1000 both have two modes of Wi-Fi, access point mode and station mode. From production, the CS10 has the access point Wi-Fi enabled. 
Access point mode is where the CS10 would connect directly to another device using its own Wi-Fi network, like an Android or iOS device, to make a connection to the mobile service tool. Station mode is where the CS10 would connect to a router's Wi-Fi network already created and could have other Wi-Fi devices connecting to it. Both modes can also be used to connect to a Windows computer and connect to the desktop service tool. In this video, we will show how the CS10 comes shipped from the production with access point mode enabled and performing the initial setup, no CG150 required. Power up your CS10. Go to your Wi-Fi network settings on your computer and find the network called Danfoss CS10 with the MAC address of your CS10 after it. Connect to the CS10 Wi-Fi network. If it asks for a password, use the serial number of the CS10. If you have a network cable plugged into your computer, you may need to unplug it or change the settings of your computer to use the Wi-Fi connection versus the wired connection. Open up the service tool, go to communication, and click online mode. The select gateway channel window should pop up and the plus one interlink CS10 Wi-Fi connection should be in the devices window. Click on it and if it asks for a password, use the serial number. You can also navigate manually to the select gateway window by going to communications, gateway, advanced, select gateway. The gateway may also appear in the communications gateway plus one interlink list. Click on it if it does. The CS10 ECU will now show up in the ECU list. If you have any other ECUs connected to the bus, you will not be able to see them until the Wi-Fi, SSID, and password are changed on the CS10. Once connected, you can open the P1D by going to the File, Open, and selecting the P1D you are subscribed to in the Update Center. In the Overview section of the P1D, the key switch shutdown mode allows to set a shutdown delay time to enter a low power mode, which reduces the current consumption to a minimum while stopping functionality. Setting the enable checkbox to true makes the device monitor the connector one, pin five, and enter the low power mode as soon as the pin voltage goes to ground. The interlink proxy is for a remote connection, which was not implemented at the time of this video. You can choose to change the interlink local password and the node address. Click save after making any changes. All device settings can be reset to their default values when using the device reset button or by connecting the connector one pin six input to supply voltage for at least 10 seconds. If resetting the device by connector one pin six is not intended, it is recommended to leave this pin open. Pressing the device restart button reboots the application and can be used as an alternative for a power cycle. The CAN section provides the ability to configure what messages are to be received. Not setting a receive configuration allows all messages. The desired baud rate for the CAN unit needs to be set in the field baud rate. For each signal to be received, the ID, extended ID, and mass must be applied. The option protect leaves the last received message at the output of the corresponding CAN receiver. When a corresponding message has been received, the parameter gets shown in the fields receive ID, length, and data. The LED indicates if the message has been received during the last second. Pressing the Save button sends the applied configuration to the device. Using the Reset button applies a set of default parameters. In the Wi-Fi configuration page, a production CS10 will have the default operation mode set to access point. Auto Enable automatically enables access point Wi-Fi when the device is powered. By default, this is enabled. Change the SSID and password to enable the CAN bus to see other ECUs. The password LED will change to green when you have a good password. The channel by default is 1 and is the channel of the Wi-Fi network. The default IPv4 network settings are known to create a functional connection. IPv4 address and netmask are that of the CS10. If DHCP enable is set, all clients that connect as DHCP client automatically retrieve an address from the range defined in the fields IPv4 start address and IPv4 end address for the time defined in the field least time. Using the save button downloads the data to the device. The actual settings are shown in the section actual settings. Using the reset button applies a set of default parameters. When you are done making your changes, click save. If you want to use station mode, click the operation mode drop down arrow and select station mode. In station mode, we need to set the SSID to the network we are connecting to. This could be your work or home network. The password is the password used when connecting to that network. Station mode can be helpful when you want your computer, mobile device, and CS10 all on the same network. This allows your computer and mobile device to have internet access at the same time as having access to the CS10. 
Normally we want auto connect checked, enabling it. For machine to machine bridge mode, DHCP must be disabled. For all other modes, DHCP should be enabled. The default IP address settings normally work and they do not need to be changed. After saving the Wi-Fi configuration, click on the Wi-Fi connection page. It should show a green LED for enabled and the updated access point name. If the LED is red and there's an enable button, click on enable. It should then change to green and show the connected clients. Your CS10 is now ready to be used as a gateway for the desktop service tool or the mobile service tool. Now let's connect our cell phone that is running the mobile service tool app to the CS10 and see a demo application. We are going to run through Access Point, that is the cell phone connecting directly to the CS10 Wi-Fi network. If you're using station mode, most of the steps are the same, only you'll connect your mobile device to the network you connected the CS10 to, like your home network. Here's what my demo application running on my DM1000 looks like. It is an oscillation application that makes the gauges move back and forth. My mobile service tool application screen monitors the signals. Hopefully you have already watched video number 37 on our YouTube channel where we introduce you to how to create a package on the mobile service tool website. Here is a high level review at the steps taken to create and share a package. Go to plusonecloud.danfoss.com, sign up and log in. In the upper right user drop down, see documentation for online manual and example. If you have a Plus One Professional license and you have already signed up on the plusonecloud.danfoss.com website, you can simply log in. If you do not have a Plus One Professional license, you can download the app, sign up, and then have someone with a professional license share a package with you. When you search for the mobile service tool in the App Store, search for Dan Foss Plus. This usually puts it at the top of the list. Download and launch the app, sign up, and log in. When you log in, you will see all packages that have been released to your user. Click on the one you want and click the Download from Cloud icon. This will save the package locally on your mobile device. The check mark indicates it was downloaded successfully. Now go to your mobile device's Wi-Fi settings and connect to the CS10 network you defined when you set it up in the service tool. If you are using station mode, connect to the same network you told the CS10 to connect to. The password is the SSID password you defined. It will show connected when successful. When using access point mode on a cellular device, the cellular data needs to be off. The access point Wi-Fi connection will not have any internet connection, and the mobile device operating system will want to use the cellular connection instead. For station mode on a network with internet, you do not have to turn off the cellular data. Go back to the mobile service tool and go to connections. Click on the plus symbol in the upper right and the mobile service tool will automatically go out and look for an interlink connection. The CS10 should show up with its MAC address. You can rename the connection if you want and save it. After saving the connection, click on the CS10 connection at the top of the connection screen. If it asks for a password, it is the interlink password from the overview section of the service tool setup screen. The CS10 connection will turn green, indicating it is connected. Go back to the packages screen and click on the package you are working with. Then click on applications at the top. Then click the application screen you created. The first page of your application will appear and you can see the signals you defined in the mobile service tool website application screen editor. You can navigate pages using the page navigator in the upper left. Here is a video of my application again. I hope this video helps give a better understanding of the multiple technologies being used. The CS10 Telemax device, the mobile service tool web page, and the mobile service tool mobile app can create a useful tool. This concludes our video. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get updates on new videos. We hope that you found this tutorial useful. Remember that Plus One Community Help is available on the Plus One User Forum. Also check out our other videos on our YouTube channel and you can always contact the Plus One Help Desk with questions. Thank you.